Hi, my friend, are you thinking about writing a book and do you wonder how to become a truly successful author? Well, today I am gonna teach you. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what I'm calling the seven habits of highly successful authors. My name's Kelly Notaris. I'm the founder of KN Literary Arts. We are a one-stop shop book studio helping you get from wherever you are to wherever you want to be. Hopefully that's with having a book in your hand and out in the world. I have been a book editor for over 20 years, working at some of the biggest publishing companies in the United States. And now I bring all of that information to you right here on this YouTube channel. So please hit subscribe and do not miss a video. All right, so today I really wanna teach you the important steps that you need to understand in order to become a successful author. That's really what I love doing more than anything. If you're watching this video, it's likely that you want to get a book out in the world and I want that for you. I know how life-changing it can be. But to actually sit down and write your book and then do the hard work of getting it into the world, well, it takes a lot of effort. And so today I'm gonna to point out seven different things that I want you to know are ahead of you on your book journey. So the first habit of becoming a highly successful author is to start with an outline. Now I know a lot of people don't wanna do that and I think, okay, great, go ahead and try writing your book without one. Um, I would say it's probably about one in 100 people could actually do that. Writing an outline sets you up for success because it lets you know exactly where you are in the book at any given time. It means that when you sit down at your computer, you're not holding this massive idea, oh my gosh, I have to write my whole book right now. That is a lot, it's hard for anybody, it's too much for your brain to handle. What I want for you is for you to actually know, okay, this is the story that I'm gonna have at the end of chapter seven, and so I'm going to write that today. Or, you know, today I really wanna work on the exercise that's going into chapter two, and I know that that exercise will be there because it's in my outline. So I have a lot of resources about how to write an outline and below you're going to be able to find the link to my outline templates. I've heard from so many people that by re like seeing these templates, they realized I could actually become an author. I didn't know that until I saw these templates. So please do take the time to download them and take a peek at them and see if they can help you with that first step. And that is writing your outline. Moving on to step number two, highly successful authors Truly, they write at the same time every day. It is not unheard of that somebody can, you know, snatch 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there on a sort of all over the, the world schedule in a week. But those people have a really strong motivation to get that done. Maybe that's you, and if so, great. But if that's not you and you've had some trouble actually committing to writing your book, I would say choose the same time every day, pick a time that works for you. So for me, when I wrote my book and also when I've worked with um, so many other authors on their books, I love writing in the mornings. In the morning is when my brain is most lit up. Um, it's when I have the most energy. I love writing over my coffee. Um, and so when I'm working on a book, I set aside all the other things I do in the morning, like meditate and exercise and journal, and I work on the book in the morning. But that's that might not be you. You might be more of a night owl. I've heard there are really three times a day when, when people tend to get that writing juice on. One is in the morning, one is between 4 and 6 p.m., which is interesting to me, and one is, you know, after the kids are in bed, um, 8 p.m. and later. So you might be a night owl, whereas I'm a, an early bird. Um, so find the time that works for you, but choose that time, commit to it, commit to writing in that time slot at least four to five days a week, and you will see huge progress on your book. The third habit is to back up your work. As long as you're not writing longhand, which I totally don't recommend, <laughs> unless you can't avoid it, um, writing longhand just sets you up for more work later because you will have to retype it before you send it to an editor, an agent, or a publisher. So uh, my recommendation is to, you can journal, obviously, I'm a big proponent of journaling, but when you're actually sitting down to write your book, I suggest you do it on some sort of a device, okay? Um, but Regardless, if you are doing it on a device, please be backing up that device. I have my device backed up no fewer than three different ways. So I actually have a video about this, which I'm gonna link below, that talks to you about the ways that I back up my computer and the ways I would like you to back up yours. I've had too many clients lose precious work because they did not have a backup. And I would recommend you have not one, but two, and you have at least one that's in a cloud and one that's a hard drive. Okay, that that sets you up so that you, you no matter what happens, you will have one of those copies somewhere. 
make sure you're connecting with your audience through story. So I don't actually care what book you're writing. I mean, the other day I was looking through a cookbook and I noticed that the cookbook author told little anecdotes about her husband and her kids. And of course she did. It makes us feel relatable. I know who she is. I understand you know, what her family dynamics are and what she can get her kids to eat and what she can't get her kids to eat. And it makes me feel like I know her and I feel more connected. I can connect it to her as an author and also to, to the cookbook. But that's just cookbooks. If you're writing um, a self-help book or a spirituality title, or you're writing a how-to guide of some sort, um, or of course, if you're writing fiction, which is all story, or memoir, which is all story, story is how your audience is going to connect to you. So don't forget to put it in there. And if you have some time, do a little research on the art of a good story. There's a lot of resources out there in books and also on the web. Um, there are even classes you can take in learning how to craft a really good story because story is really the heart of any book. The fifth habit of highly successful authors is to grow a thick skin. <laughs> I hate to say this because I personally don't have a hugely thick skin, but it's so important. No matter what, if you're putting your work into the world, it will get both praise and criticism. It's just the way it goes. And you know what? I have this wonderful anecdote in my book, the book you were born to write, um, about the editorial director that I worked under when I was working at Hyperion in New York. And he was this wonderful man, Will Schwalbe. He's also a New York Times bestselling author himself. And he always used to say that that he knew he had a bestseller on his hands if half of the editorial table loved it and half of the editorial table hated it. Isn't that interesting? So if you want to be a best-selling author, you got to be ready for a lot of people to not like your book. So growing that thick skin and remembering your purpose, your motivation, the reason you're writing the book. You are writing the book for a really good reason and that may not connect with every single person who reads it and that's okay. One of my recommendations here is to not read your Amazon reviews if you can avoid it. Honestly, you will over-focus on the handful that might not be five stars and forget about all the five-star reviews that are there. It's just the way the human mind works. Works. So grow that thick skin, get ready for some people to love it and some people to hate it, and you will be on the right track. The sixth habit of highly effective authors I want to talk to you about is to treat your book like a small business that you're launching. So yes, it's a book, it's a creative endeavor, but in order to get readers for the book, you are going to have to do the dreaded marketing. You're going to have to really think about how you're connecting with your audience and how you're going to get this book into their hands. It's just the fact of the matter. So like it or not, and some people like it and some people hate it, writing a book is like launching a small business and you want to really think through how who your audience is, um, how you're going to reach them. How are you going to reach them? Are you going to do social media? Are you going to write a newsletter? Are you going to do a blog? Are you going to um, have TikTok? What are you going to do? How are you going to reach that audience? And then what kind of audience do you already have? You know, maybe you are a therapist and you've got a clientele that you've been building for 30 years that you have an email list. Fabulous. Um, maybe you just have your friends and family right now. That's okay too. You know, every platform was built from zero. So don't worry if you haven't got a platform yet, that's okay, but you wanna start thinking about it because again, the way you get the book out into the world is to promote it and promoting it like you would promote any business that you would like to see revenue from, which I assume you're probably wanting to see some revenue from your book. And the last lesson that I want to impart to you successful authors to be is to enjoy the journey. Most people get into writing a book because they actually enjoy writing or they have this calling that they just can't turn away. And I always say you can trust that. You can trust life. Life has planted this dream in your heart. There is a reason for that. I trust it and I want you to as well. It is an uncertain journey. There's no way to know whether you're gonna make money off your book, whether you're gonna hit the New York Times list. You only can follow the impulse that life is put into your heart and your hands and write the book and see what happens. I've had so many clients who've told me that just writing the book or even just the book proposal was the thing they needed. It healed them, it taught them that they could do difficult things, it gave them faith in themselves. There was something about writing the book that was important and it didn't even need to get out into the world. Other people, they know this book is meant to help people and they are willing to put the time, effort, energy, and finances behind making that happen. Regardless which camp you fall in, I'm telling you, if you're watching this video, there's a reason. Life wants something from you, please follow it. So that's what I've got for you today. Again, we love talking to new authors and authors who are already published alike at KN Literary. So visit us at knliterary.com and you can schedule a call to talk to one of our editors for free. I would love it if you wanted to do that. In the meantime, please be well, go forth and become a successful author. And as always, happy writing.